I want to welcome everybody for being here today. Um, this is the Committee on Social Services, Veterans, Culture, and Recreation. And I'd like to introduce to my right is City Councilor Gina Louise Shearer from Ward 4. I'm City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge from Ward 6 in the chair. And our, the councilor who usually sits to the left of me, Alyssa Klein, she is out of the country for a couple of weeks, so she's not here today. So, anyways, um, I want to call the meeting to order, and I want to announce the use of the audio-video recording of the meeting, and it's NCTV, and it is shown on Channel 15. I think in a couple of days he comes and picks it up, and then it's recorded. Um, I would like to make a motion of the approval of minutes of January 21st, 2015. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I want to thank Julie Roberts, who is the Executive Directory of the Literacy Project, for being here today. And I see she has brought some guests with her. And Julie, we're going to go ahead and let you do your presentation and you can let us counselors know also when we can start asking you questions and so forth. Okay, great. So I'm Judith Roberts and I'm the director of the Literacy Project. And today we have two students with us from, and a daughter, a beautiful daughter, <laughs> who goes to Jackson Street School. But I'll let the two students introduce themselves. Will you say your name? How to stop up there. Okay. My name is Alia. So, Harsha, could you, Julie, write their names down? Judy, oh. Judy, 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 Okay. Okay, so Aaliyah and Harsha are um, both attending Literacy Project classes, and in a few minutes you'll hear from them because they're going to tell you about their experience at the program. And we are very, very fortunate to receive funding from the city of Northampton, as well as from the Massachusetts Department of Education, the United Way, and generous citizens of Northampton. Um, all of our classes and programs are free and open to the public. So we have three levels of classes in Northampton, at Fort Gothic, at the city owned building, the James House Learning Center. And it's a great, place to be. We invite any viewers to come and visit us. We have our classrooms there and also Center for New Americans has classrooms. And as Aaliyah will tell you, she first went to Center for New Americans, but they said, your English is too good. They said, go to Literacy Project and you can get your GED. So that's what these two women are working on. So we have three levels of classes in Northampton the very beginning level for reading and writing and math, which is equivalent to approximately a first through sixth grade level, but we work only with adults. And um, then we have a medium level, which is sixth through ninth grade, which is sort of equivalent to maybe a middle school level. And then we have um, our highest level, which is a nine through 12 of reading, writing and math for students who are preparing, well all of our students are preparing to take the test that's called the high set test now. It used to be called the GED, and I might forget and still say, I asked you about the GED, because that's what we've always called it for years and years, but the state has it contracted with a new test company, and it's called the high set, which stands for high school equivalency test. Um, our, some of our students are young, they could be as young as 16 years old, but they have to have parental permission to come to our classes. And as old as we have a woman who's 76 years old, who worked her whole life, she's retired now, and she said, I want to be able to read to my grandchildren and help them with their homework. So she's there, <coughs> and so we, we don't like to get students as young as 16. We don't like when students drop out of high school and come to us, we try to, if we get someone that young, the first thing we say is, can you set a goal to go back to school? 
because we feel the high school is the best place for the young people. They have the most resources. Sometimes, unfortunately, a student has burned their bridges with the high school, maybe expelled or whatever. So they do come to us, but that's really in the minority. Most of our students are in their 20s and 30s, and they just want to get on with their life. They want to get that high school diploma and make a better life for themselves and their families, as you'll hear from these two beautiful women. Um, and we're not just teaching reading and writing. The test is in five subject areas, so it's reading, writing, math, science, and social studies. And students have to prepare in all that. And while we have students with us, we are doing, we're registering people to vote, in, we can help people who need to get their citizenship. So, um, so we're not just strictly the academics, we're giving folks the steps that they need to take to move on and make a better life for themselves. We like to think of ourselves as the on-ramp for the road out of poverty into a better life a better job where you can earn a living income. And um, you know, we all know education opens doors. It certainly did that in my life. I went to college very late in life. I graduated from Smith College when I was 50 years old. But it, it transformed my life. And I just had a, such a wonderful experience that I thought, I wanted to go back and help other adults who hadn't gone on to school. So that's how I came to the Literacy Project in my own life. And there's also a ripple effect, because more than half of our students are parents themselves, like these two women are both parents, and when they get their education, they're better able to help their children, like this beautiful young lady, to be successful in school. Because we all know that the one thing that a child needs is a caring and loving adult to help them to be successful. So um, there's a ripple effect to the work that we do. And of course, when someone is, achieves their education goals, is better able to support themselves and their families, the whole community, we all benefit from that. So we're, we're really in the business of helping people to succeed in the long term to have a better economic opportunity. And that certainly happened to me as well by going to school. It's the one way, education is the one way that we know that people can have a better life, a better share in the American dream. So just a couple of quick highlights from this year. We have 30 students enrolled. Um, we serve, as I said, a population of adults and some out of school youth. And also we get people who have graduated from ESOL, or in this case, are already learned English well enough that they don't need the Center for New Americans classes, and then they come straight to us. Um, we usually have a little more women than men, for some reason this year in Northampton, we have 73% women and 27% men. But um, it usually runs about in 51 or 2% women. And so this year is a good year for women. <laughs> and um, so far this year, seven students took and passed the high set test. That, ten, that number really will ratchet up later on in the year because students are um, getting ready to take it. Um, five students already entered community college for the January term, and um, another five students got jobs, and 13 students wrote resumes. So that's very important, getting ready for jobs. Um, just briefly, we have a computer class, and we've integrated those skills because that's very important for any job now is to have computer skills. And unfortunately, the digital divide is still with us. So students come in, and they're able to use our computer labs and get familiar with computers. And we also do content areas of the academics um, on the computers. We've been using them for geography and um, uh, 
they were looking at properties of elements and doing statistical analysis, which is math and very good stuff. Um, in social studies, they've been looking at um, civil rights, and of course the um, Selma, you know, that's been in the news, so they've been looking at that. And um, in science, we go to Smith College and use their microscopes. So they've been looking at cell structure, and we're about to take a trip up to Smith College where we can, because of course we wouldn't have all that you know, with the microscopes. We, we're a very small nonprofit. So it's wonderful to be able to use the Smith College Science Lab. And um, math, the teacher told me that he really focuses half the week is devoted to math because it's so important. It's so important. And this year we had some nutritionists from UMass come in. And um, the ladies will tell you that today they both went, all, all of our classes went to college for a day at Holyoke Community College, which is a really neat way for people to learn about the opportunities. Because we know, and I'm sure you know, that getting your high set or your GED, your high school equivalency degree, is not a stopping point. It's a beginning. It's the beginning. And people have to go on with their lives, as both these women want to. So um, that's just a little overview of the work that we do. The Literacy Project has five sites, and Northampton is a very robust and wonderful place for us to be. And um, the um, building, again, at 42 Gothic Street is beautiful, and I would invite anyone to come visit. I have a short video that's about six minutes long that um, just talks about the general would you like to start? Sure, okay. Definitely. And then um, our two students will talk, and then we'll have time for questions and answers. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so let's see. speak for ourselves.
going to run over? Yeah, I'll call it. We got so close. I know. <laughs> I know. I thought I almost hurt something. Yeah, you did, though, but there's no sound. And thanks for trying, Gina. Of course. Okay, so we'll just. Gina Louise, wasn't that Frank that was here from MIS? I don't know. I should have introduced myself. I didn't know who that was. In, otherwise, we can just have these two beautiful women speak, and we'll just, um, I have another, also very short video, another one, but, um, if one doesn't work, the other one's not going to work. True. Um, I mean, the other thing we could try and do is we could just try and play it on my computer, and we just have to watch it on my computer. It wouldn't be on that screen, but... Yeah, or a small room. Yeah, try that. I guess. Like if you take the thumb drive out and give it to me. I hear what you're saying. Is that might work. Yeah. 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 I'll try the other one just to see if. She's gonna try. To All right. Care. Well, we'll just, we'll just. I wanted the um, these two beautiful women, Alex and Say, they took time out of their busy schedules to come and just. Um, so maybe, Aaliyah, you can just speak about how you came to find out about the literacy project and what you're working on. Okay. Um, actually, I know I know I was in the last year. I was in uh, the honesty. Because you go to you, you go to sorry hold it for me. Yes, is that what you said. Yeah. On on the other days or yes. do you, are there classes at the Literacy Project every day? Or? Um, there are classes every day, but we only have two teachers, uh -huh. and so we have three levels. So that's how we stagger them for the different levels. Right. And so we're you know we do our work on a shoestring, yeah. and um, so that's how we make it work. It's a lot to cover. One level does yeah. not meet every single day. Of the yeah, yeah. And do you do, since you're covering five areas, 
do you like do you do a sort of a science section or is it just throughout the year they're in your little bit together? My name is Jay. Oh, she so got it to work. Sounds like it's working. Well, I took out the speakers. I have had it to So just play on the computer. All right. Five years. I had to drop out when I was in the game. Okay. Do you want me to stop it? Yes, so please. Well, okay, if I had too much Thank you, Pam. So, Pam, the My speakers aren't working? I'm going to have high school on my 16th birthday. I couldn't deal with it. I was getting... It's going to be hard to hear about without the speakers. I think your voice sounds heavy. I mean, I can, I can hear it. Um, I can too. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll put it back on after. After. Okay. So, um, and um, I'm going to tell you that you like working on math yeah. and your reading. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Michelle helped us how to, she, she's not just help us to learn, she helps us how to to be teacher, I, she helped me how to teach my daughter, and I have a lot of idea. I have a lot of idea. I joined my daughter's school, Honey uh, Mathy Club, and so I got some ideas from my, uh, Michelle, and I help uh, my daughter's teacher how to uh, how to teach our kids in a uh, different way, like when they play, when they. That's right. 
you know, also, and then you don't have to rush it because nobody says you have to rush it. Yeah. You know, you know what your ability is, and if you have to take your time, you take your time. Mm -hmm. Because even at taking your time, you can be an all A student because of taking your time versus yeah. somebody rushing it and then finding, well, you know, I did mess out on a lot. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, everybody uh, are anxious with Ms. Lisa and Ms. Lisa to have more information from her because we really believe every single minute with, it, with her is very expensive. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. And okay. also, um, I feel uh, that they give me a test for the uh, there is, uh, as the lady said, three levels. Yeah. They, uh, I start uh, a few months with the lower level, and uh, Miss Michelle gave me a test, and they gave me the higher level. But still, I feel I need the full classes yeah. because my spelling is still not really good. I talked to Miss Michelle about that, and she, I'm sorry, but she said she can't because it's, uh, she, it's not in her hand because it's different classes. So I really, if there are any chance to be full time with them, because really I need it. Oh, I see what you're saying, to go every day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wish we could. Yeah, yeah, yeah I wish we could. Okay, and Hansha, you were gonna talk about your, how you came there. Oh, I, my English is very poor. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. yeah. Uh, yeah, so I asked, my friend and she recommend the literacy program and I went over there. I passed the exam and I met Michelle. Oh yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I started my English class over there. And you said you have <coughs> math, it's easy for I you? I know math, yes. It's very easy for me. That's great. The math is very easy? Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> good. And, and you also um, were telling me why you want to get your GED. Oh, I want a good job, like professional job. Yeah. I want to be educated myself. Yeah. yeah. So a job that requires an education. And right now, um, Hasha has a job, but she wants a better, better yeah. job. Where is she working right now? A uh, convenience store. Yeah. yeah. But after I go in literacy program, like I am more confident. And, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Do you want to go to college? Um, yeah, but <coughs> I want to go every day in Michelle's class <coughs> first. Okay. Yeah. It's a stepping stone uh -huh. to it the is. future. It really is. It's a pathway to progress in the future. How long are students usually with the project? Well, it really varies. So you came like last year, you said? Oh, no, I started, yeah. October. October. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't finish here. Okay, not yet. And Hasha, when did you start? Last year, April. April, so yeah. you're almost a year. Yeah. So it really depends on the person. Mm -hmm. We often have people who come for three months. They just need to brush up to get ready to take the test, the high set test, and then they will take the test and move on. While they're with us, we try to get them to set goals for the next step, you know, for the future. We try to do that with all of our students, what we call education and career goals for the future. So some people take three months, some people take three years. And it really varies on the student, and it's, it's very individual, and you can take whatever amount of time that you need. You know, just, it depends on what level a student is at, you know, when they start. Yeah. Say they leave your program, then they go to Holyoke Community College. Yeah. Do they start off as a full-time student there, or do they go part-time? Well, Holyoke Community College has a very good program called Transitions to College, so people can go in, into that, and that's really good because support students, they're special, classes that's teaching, for example, note-taking. 
how to make, how to format a paper for college. So they're giving you some skills that will, you know, that you can use in college and and and, and support for, um, you know, understanding how to navigate. They have someone that they call the college navigator. Uh -huh. And so it, that's really helpful. And most people start out part time because, as I said, our students are adults. Many of them are parents. Mm -hmm. And many, many people are working as well. So are classes mostly in the morning, or is there child care? How do you help parents attend? Well, our students, um, our classes are 9 to 1. And, and they are Monday through Friday, but again, no one class is every single day because we have two teachers and we have three levels. So, um, so that's, but then people can sometimes stay in the afternoon, get extra help um, if they need it. And um, we don't currently have childcare in that building. There is a space for it and we've had it sort of intermittently, but um, the truth is we're not really in the business. Providing childcare is a whole thing unto itself. And the literacy practice is really in the business of providing classes for adults. And so what we do for childcare, for other services that people need, is we do lots of referrals. So our staff is very informed about the resources in the community because we refer people constantly. We might refer them to ServiceNet. We might refer them to community action, to fuel assistance, to help with taxes. So we do literally thousands of referrals every year to programs that are outside of our program where you can go for childcare. Childcare is a big issue, as you know. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, it's a big issue. Yeah. Do you have more questions? Is that the only child you have? Yes. Daughter. Do you have a daughter? Your husband has two. I have two sons. Yeah. So, you know, everyone that is part of a family, and as I said, it's kind of a rising tide with small boats because when one of our students gets a high set, is able to move on to community college and ultimately to a job that can support a family. It helps everyone. And it helps us in a way too because it helps the whole community because they become more engaged. Now like when they're applying at the community college, yeah. I mean, are you there in support of yes. them to guide them through exactly. the process? Yeah. And we talk a lot about the programs that are available and, and today was college for a day, as I said, which is a really good program. Yeah. And they give you lunch too, don't yeah. they? I agree. <laughs> just to get people familiar with what the college has to offer. And you, you said they were talking about health care yeah. careers. Yeah, I went to a health careers and I went to STEM. Uh, uh, this program for uh, science and uh, mathematics and all everything together. And I signed up for some of the classes there. So they for the country. That's good. Uh, yeah. And you went to English, English, and health class. Question, Judith. Besides Holyoke Community College, any of them ever been accepted, like at Smith College or Holyoke College? Because there's so many grants out there. So we are we really believe in community college as a stepping stone, as a start. Yeah. Because it's very affordable and in some cases free if you qualify for the Pell Grant the federal funding. And it's, it's, a, it's a place to begin, and we've had students, we have a student who um, graduated from Greenfield Community College, and then went on to Smith, to the program at Smith, and graduated from there. And um, she actually came back to work in human services because, like me, she wanted to help other people, like Aliyah, you know, it's kind of common. So, um, so yes, we do have people that go on to four-year schools, go to UMass. Yeah. 
And of course, right in the Hampton, obviously, mm -hmm. Smith is such a good resource. It's great that you have a relationship with Smith and like, that you use lab space. Oh, it's beautiful because the Smith students get a lot out of it because the Smith science students work, where they partner up with our students oh, nice. and work together. And, and they want to, yeah. We also have Smith volunteers, by the way, that come into our classroom and work with our students. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Because yeah. don't they have at Smith College a women's working program to go to college? Mount Holyoke, Smith. It's almost like a university without walls. I have three nieces that are graduates of Smith mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. So they probably went to the program I went to, which is for older women going back to school. There you go. Oh, the Ada yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah, they have that at Smith, Mount Holyoke, and Amherst College. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What made you Jane, decide to go back to college at 50 years old? Well, I I'm very said, interested to know that because here we have a director, right, for the literacy project, and here you are helping. Our woman and men. Yeah. To move on. Well, I always say, I have four children. I always said when my children, after they graduate from college, that I would go to college. Well, I didn't totally wait until the very end because when I was at Smith, all four of my children were in college. We were all in college. Oh, wow. And working, you know, and getting scholarships and doing our best. And um, it just, I felt like it just transformed my life. You know, was, and so then when I read in the paper that the literacy project was looking for a director, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity for me to get back and help other adults to help that. Because I sort of, you know, like the light bulb went off, it was a million light bulbs that went on, mm -hmm. you know, where I suddenly, I just couldn't believe the wonderful the experience of being in college and just having the opportunity to learn. As a working person, I had worked for more than 30 years before I went there. And so the idea that you just kind of could sit back and learn was so beautiful. Did you go to a community college? I did. I went to Greenfield Community College. Okay. And I graduated from there. And then I went on to some yeah. Yeah. And then I went to Harvard. I was so excited. <laughs> so, so, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll let you play it. Okay, all right, so we have now, um, I got two videos. One is six minutes long, and it's kind of an overview, which okay. may, maybe you're, and then one is just a very short, we don't have to rush it, we have time. Okay. All right, so, and maybe it'll think, you'll make you think of more questions. I have come to 11 different schools and published. I had too much rap out when I was in the middle of a lot of gang violence in my schools. My mother actually sent me out of high school on my 16th birthday. I couldn't deal with it. I was getting beat up like every other, maybe a week or so. Everybody is on this one. This is where I'm. the highest. My name is Jay Kucher, and my mom went to Legacy Project as I succeeded in getting my GED thanks to them. I just tended to go towards the wild side, and I spent more time in the parking lot than I did in his classrooms, and and then I just started running away and, and being rebellious and moved out and got pregnant, you know, had babies, raised kids, and just never thought of my education again uh, until later years. And, and then I, you know, realized I got to do something because this is, this is craziness. I'm 54 years old and I need to change my life.
it open, and I, I was just amazed that what, what, what kind of a ticket a GED brother was. You know, it's not just a certificate. It's a ticket to any place and anything you want to become. You know, all my life I kind of wanted to help people. The field that I want to work in is substance abuse. And, uh, you know, see if I could touch people. That's what I want to do. And made me look at my goals that I've had since a child and stuff and, and haven't looked at for so many years because of the choices I made myself, you know, and now I've turned my life to making more positive choices and more learning experiences, and that's what I've given, come to here for all this time. But this is a great place to learn, and uh, I don't think I've ever had, uh, you know, I know I've never had um, teachers that care about my success, because the, the teachers, they, uh, you know, they, they, they serve, they're so personal, and I believe that uh, they have She's um, one of the managers at the Big E in East Hampton, and um, she's a student at Holyoke Community College. And Frederick, the man that was speaking, he um, was a homeless veteran that was at um, Soldier On, mm -hmm. and he came to our program. He also got his GED and was able to um, move on, and he actually moved to Springfield, got his own place, and um, was going to take classes at Stick, you know, Sprinkle Technical Community mm -hmm. So um, they both have graduated and moved on their lives. And I apologize for, I didn't, I must have 
the speakers must have broken or something. No, I just think it's a compatibility issue. They're probably, you know, an older, it looks like an older set of speakers okay. that probably don't go with uh, that. with a laptop. Okay. It's not, you know, I mean, okay. we can hear. It was, it was hard to hear. I can hear it. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's fine. Good. So I just wondered if you had any more questions. I was going to ask you about the two students. Yeah. When there was that fundraising going on yeah. at the Academy of Music. Yeah. Weren't they both there receiving? Yeah, Jay, yeah. Jay and Fred were both at that. They both um, this graduated that event. Was this video created for that event? I remember yeah. I remember mm -hmm. seeing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know, some of the other people went by quickly, so, but our teacher Michelle was in there. Plus, I don't know if you noticed, but there was an older gentleman. We have a 90 year old boss here. Oh, yeah. He's 90. Wow. And, um, he just recently moved from Northampton to Amherst to a, a, a senior living, but he's, he's completely drives his car. He's a former accountant, and he comes and volunteers. And um, we have, over the course of the year, about 100 volunteers. We have two paid teachers at every one of our classrooms at, at all five sites. But then we have about 100 volunteers. And so you saw that older gentleman. He's Bill, he's really amazing. We have two volunteers that are in their 90s. We have Bill, who now is volunteering in Amherst. He was in, in Northampton. Um, and then, um, I don't know if you saw, it was a very young woman. And that's one of the college student volunteers, because we have volunteers from all the five colleges, not just the, yeah, and that's really amazing. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. But I thought the two of them looked so familiar. Yeah, I yeah, said Jay, I, they both are Northampton residents, although Fred now um, moved to Springfield. But they, yeah, and they were both graduating with both right. That's right. Yeah. 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 So I always wondered what they were doing when I saw that. Yes. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because Fred had really came from some hard knocks. He was homeless and like, yep. you know. I remember him saying that. Yeah, and he changed his life. He really did. Yeah. That's yeah. because he wanted to make a change. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Any other questions? I don't think so. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, well, thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you. And thank you, you too. <laughs> and thank you for coming here. And thank you for your daughter for being thank here. You. Yeah, she's good. She's very quiet. I know, she's yeah. very quiet. Yeah. yeah. My okay. kids would not be that. Thank you, Trudy. Okay. Well, Thank you, Any other questions or? No. Oh, okay. I brought you. Oh, I didn't know if either of you wanted to brochure sure. or if you had any. In some cases, Gina, I don't know if you have any constituents or anything. Yes, I would couple. like some. Okay. So you not a whole bunch, but like, is that too many? Too many? Yeah. Okay. Just I mean, if you just want one or two. Do you, know, do you have anybody or any? I do. I mean, I'm actually my, um, we're in my ward right now. I'm the downtown person. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if um, there's a place where you don't have brochures that would be well, helpful. Well, if you see, I mean, we try to keep with the library. You know, I said that we do, you know, over a thousand referrals a year. We also get a lot of referrals, mm -hmm. you know, from Community Action, from Service Net, from all the organizations, you know, the Soldier On yeah. program, which has been a very good program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, and I have to give you, Jean, I have to give you a bookmark. Okay. Because, uh, I'll give you a bookmark too. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. We have another one. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. You'll do it. I want to go over and do a site visit. So I, oh, yeah, please do. I know I haven't been here in two, two years. And it's a beautiful building. You love it. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Right. Today, really, sort of feels all right. This is really like it's happening fast. Yes. Yes. Like it's spring. <laughs> Finally. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for so coming over twice. Come on, come on. No problem. Like your boots. Yeah, really. No worries. You're eight. You're in second grade? Yeah. 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 Ye
of course, I wouldn't have thought of that. I just threw it in. It was speaker's query. Check that one up on this knot. Well, we always know that they're not compatible when the, when the, oh, the um, thing doesn't fit into the socket, but in this case, it did. So yeah, that's a little. I know, I know. That's why I thought it was okay. <laughs> Were you trying to see the Yes. Did you ever meet Julie Roberts? Where, where are you guys from? Senior Center. 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 Senior my cord? Oh, yeah. um, actually, this goes to my... Um, oh, okay, sorry. All right, thank you very much. Oh, students. Oh, this is Pat Shaughnessy. She's the director of the Senior Center, and that's her assistant. Hi, Hi. 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 Patty. And you are? Mm -hmm. yeah, she is well. I heard you were wonderful in here. <laughs> and this is Crystal. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. So they're in the process of getting their GED. They're going outside. Yeah. Well, that's a big challenge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'll probably see you on a site visit. Sure. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, I hope you come. I'll call you. Okay, so nice meeting you all. Very nice meeting you. Yeah, nice to meet you, Patty. So when you're in the building, hello. Okay. Okay. And I'm there, say hi. Yeah, we want it. Have time. Time. And sometimes uh, we, we have a presentation. Have beautiful did you prefer, did you want right? the presentation yeah, just on the paper, or did you want it on the computer? The recreation yeah. department yeah. taking over the back part of the right. building. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of um, needs for us in the front of the building. Oh, okay. There's going to be a lot of programs in the back. So, so I mean, if we haven't figured it all out yet, yes. we'll still be able to do some rentals. So it's yes. just figuring it all out for the next couple of But yes, call anyway. It's worth the call. Okay, yeah, great to meet you. Thank you, Gina and thank Marianne. You. Thank Thanks you so much. Anna, and Gina thank you, Pam, so much. Thanks for coming over. <laughs> Obviously, I need a lot of tech help. <laughs> okay. Do you, um, they have to thank you. I feel like I'm going to need a new one. Oh, wow. Running out of Well, they always said way back when computers came, you wouldn't need to use paper. I don't think that's true for right. all. I'm just going to open up our meeting public comment, and I see that there's no public comment. We've still got five minutes, so I would like to take out of order that number eight, but I would like to speak about the agenda for the month of April. For the month of April, uh, Mary. Claire Higgins, the Executive Director of Community Action of Franklin, Hampshire, and North Wabin yeah. Regions, will be attending. And I asked her if she wanted to do a presentation by screen. She thought that was a great idea. She emailed me, and I guess she's going to probably talk about it, bring some brochures for us, and so forth. And I was hoping she would do a screen. Oh, awesome. And then we have Steve Connors coming back. We've got to have him come back so we know about it. And he's going to give us a year to date veteran service expenditures and this will be year 2016 projected budget. And he's also going to talk about military family and appreciation. And Brad LeVay, he's excited about that. And so I get give that us to an you update on um, the Lord Baron um, okay. Veterans Council on their activities mm -hmm. for 2016. Mm -hmm. And I've also yeah, been working both use really hard on the arts. Mm -hmm. And I think I saw some videos coming in and out. And Paul Flayhan really excited okay. about coming. She wanted to know if we'd like to have a couple of students come in and say, Yeah. How was the 
was the dinner yesterday. It was very nice. Yeah, it was very nice. Input, but is it because a lot of participants yeah. do it next year? We capped it at 125. That could have sold probably 25 more tickets. Oh, I bet you it could have. Wow. So it's you awesome. can't see it on our screen. Yeah. And the mail was turned on. My husband and I. Yeah. Right. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, so, so call yeah. Pauline and, and John Kaczynski, and they have another crew that so they are always the ones doing the cooking for mm -hmm. us when we have big events. And they have uh, Paul Demon does it for mm -hmm. uh, St. Elizabeth Ann Seaton, mm -hmm. and, and she's always up there cooking. Same day when the mayor came. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. awesome. I know that the battery and the church. I feel like St. Patrick's Day is probably the holiday that has the most events around it, except for maybe. That's a, yeah, that's yeah. Even the same. She couldn't wait for like two solid weeks and you couldn't really go to events. That's probably one of the most events. Yeah, it's 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 Crystal Cody, who is the Assistant Director of Senior Services. <laughs> and Crystal, are you going to be doing the presentation by screen now? Yeah, I'm just loading it right now. Okay. So, why don't you talk about what we're going to see on that? Okay, so um, I had submitted a agenda, um, which we're covering everything in there, but the sequence is just a little bit differently. I um, reorganized it. So, Crystal uh, put together a PowerPoint, and then this document reflects what's in the, uh, the uh, PowerPoint. So um, while she's doing that, can, I can actually start. Um, so we, we at Senior Services have a mission statement, which um, at this point, the Council on Aging Board is going to have to uh, redo uh, in, because we are no longer called the Northampton Council on Aging. We are still a senior center. And our name was changed because the mayor had the directive from the charter to review all the departments and make adjustments. And so our department now is called Senior Services. Um, we are still working with the advisory board, which is the Council on Aging Board, and we are still in the senior center. So I think everybody's getting used to answering the phone and saying, senior services and senior center but there's a pause like they have the wrong number mm -hmm. um, so anyway what, what basically we are um, funded for and represent those who are 60 and older in Northampton um, though when I first became the director which was back in 2001 I sometime after that asked the board to uh, change so that we could do 55 to 59 because we had a lot of people who were interested in participating um, in our programs and I think it was great that a lot of people were retired at that age but also it's an age group 55 to 59 it's like where do we go here where can we um, participate so it also assists us with um, a revenue source and also um, a pool of potential volunteers um, so that that is helpful and basically we um, provide a variety of programs and I will be getting into a little bit about the programs and what we do uh, because it is far reaching uh, the kinds of programs and services that we do provide um, and we, we work with local state and federal agencies um, to provide what we need to provide um, to benefit the seniors who uh, we are serving. Uh, we also work with a lot of the families and we work with neighbors um, so we, we are always getting uh, calls and drop-ins, uh, not just from seniors, but concerned family or neighbors, or we might get a call from um, another department about a particular senior who may be having some issues and how can we either intervene or assist. Because a lot of what we do is 
information in referral. The next page is Senior Services Code of Conduct. Every senior center um, should have a code of conduct. So our code of conduct has been redefined since we opened. Our building opened September 30th, 2007. That was our grand opening, and so we've been going strong since. And as time progresses, we just keep um, providing more and more because of the needs that exist and also because we get requests from seniors about new kinds of programming. So the code of conduct is what is expected for participants in the building. Um, and since 2007, um, as I mentioned, this does get redefined based on some of the issues that may come up within the senior center. The next page is uh, senior center services funding sources. Um, I think as much as we try to get everybody to know, and I speak, you know, mostly about seniors, but the community members, how we're we are funded, because a lot of people think we should be able to do everything for free because the city gives us the money. So that's partially true. We are funded through a city budget appropriation, and I put here um, what we were funded for um, in this current fiscal year. So the city provides us funding, and then senior services is self-funding as well, and that's how much we had to uh, come up with within the budget to have what we want in our budget. Um, so those are the two main sources of uh, how our budget is funded. So specifically, we work on grants, and currently we have a medical transportation grant from Highland Valley Elder Services. We have the LGBT grant from Highland Valley Elder Services. That actually went through our friends group um, because we needed to do it um, as a 501c3. So we have that grant. And that is uh, working with Williamsburg, Amherst, and East Hampton uh, senior centers as well. So the four of us are, we were awarded the grant, but it's including uh, those uh, three senior centers as well. Williamsburg, East Hampton? Williamsburg, East Hampton, and Amherst. <clears throat> and each year we are, as every Council on Aging can do, is apply to the Department of Elder Affairs for what's called the formula grant. That's based on a dollar amount that's set by the legislature times the number of seniors that we have in Northampton or whoever's community is. So that the 46,992 is what we receive from the state um, for this formula grant. And then this year, Crystal um, applied for a grant through Massachusetts Councils on Aging. It's a three-year grant that we were awarded for $90,000. And it's for benefits counseling, which is pulling all the kind of benefits that are available for seniors, and a volunteer will work with that senior so that it's all at one location, so a person's not going here for, uh, for a um, application or here, and it's putting all of the resources together. So somebody could, might only have wanted fuel assistance, but now they can get assistance with SNAP, with, um, any other kind of resource out there like community action and so forth because that's a biggie yes yeah. yeah that's exactly i developed the public benefit screening tool so that um, the volunteers will all be trained and then they'll also have monthly meetings and then they'll use the screening tool to work with the one senior and screen them for all the benefits so that way it's kind of like a one-shot deal because all the benefit applications require the same documentation so it's silly to have somebody have to go from place to place to place to get help with an application when they can kind of bring all the documentation and have all the applications filled out at one time and then the volunteers are also going to do a check-in a 30-day check-in to say have you heard anything from these places you applied if you did you get a letter let me see the letter so that it, it really makes sure that people get the benefits because sometimes they, they get they fall through the cracks and mm -hmm. we really want to prevent that from happening especially for seniors when you talk about documentation explain that all the public benefit applications um, 
They want a photo ID, so they want either a driver's license, a Massachusetts state ID, or a passport. They want documentation of all of your income, so that's either an award letter, a pension award letter, a social security award letter, or a 1099 document. They, generally speaking, they want copies of your utility expenses that are in your name. Um, so your heating expenses, your electricity, even your telephone. For some of the public benefit programs, they'll do like an expense to income ratio to help people qualify for benefits. So that's the type of documentation that's needed. And it's usually 90% of the time, it's the same documentation for each application. So it's good that you know we can screen them for all these programs at one time. So is there a price tag on this? I'm talking about same as the stormwater utility fee, okay? You can get exempt 20%, 30%, 40%, or 50, but you need to have that certain amount of income. If you're over 100, 200, or $300, you do not qualify. Some so is there a limit? Not for the seniors that are asking for the help, with the benefits, but for some of the benefits, there are income limits. But any senior in the community can get this benefit counseling at no fee. Right. But whether or not they qualify, some of their there are income guidelines for each right. program. Okay. Yeah. 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 And what's nice about this program is it will um, bring volunteers for benefits counseling into the person's home because so many um, individuals do not have transportation or they don't have the capacity to leave their homes. Mm -hmm. This is also a regional program, so we're working with other communities. Um, and I will you know, give you, Crystal a lot of credit because this was a competitive grant and um, Northampton was selected um, to do this because of the outstanding job Crystal did on the grant application. So $90,000 was quite a bit of money. Yeah. Thank you. So we work with seniors in other communities to you screen seniors in other communities. The volunteer, we're gonna have, we're gonna work with other councils on aging um, as well. We're covering all of Highland Valley Elder Services catchment area, so we're coordinating with the other senior centers and to recruit volunteers from other communities. I currently have one volunteer from Huntington and one volunteer from Williamsburg. We're in the volunteer recruitment phase. Um, we're going to start the training in April. Um, we're hoping to have at least five volunteers. They want us to have at least five volunteers for the first training. Um, but we're doing all the, the trainings as far, at the senior center, so people will, you know, it's a, it's a very central location for the communities that we're serving. So it would be a good meeting space for the volunteers. Who helped you do the grant writing? Nobody. You did it all on your own? Yes. In one, <laughs> in, in one day. In one day? Three hours. Yeah. Yeah, we, we decided probably like on a Monday that we were going to do it, and the grant was due on a Friday, so I had to like um, figure out what we, we met and discussed what we wanted to put in the grant, and then um, I put it all together, and I sent it to Patty, and I said, I hope you like it, because I have to submit it by 5 o'clock. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Because amazing. I talk with some of the directors, and it takes them time to do grant writing. Yeah, I've um, my first experiences doing grant writing was when I worked for um, an aging service access point, Greater Springfield Senior Services, wow. um, and I worked under somebody who actually wrote books on grant writing. Okay. So uh, I was a she taught me how to look for what they want to know and only give the information that they really want to know. Like, don't fluff it up because they're probably going to get lost reading all the fluff. <laughs> so she taught you the most important value yeah. of doing the grant work. Right. Figure out what they want to know and that's what you focus on. Because right. <laughs> that's excellent. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and, and then Patty also talking about transportation, which has been a problem. There's no question about it. I mean, we all know that with our seniors, and we have a problem at the senior center. We need a new van, yes. and hopefully that's coming through capital improvements, and I went over that over the weekend, mm -hmm. looking at it, and it is high priority, so mm -hmm. let's hope. Yeah. And I think, Patty, talking about that, you have a fundraiser going out, and how much have you already? Oh, I, do, I do have that in here. Um, uh, do you want me to skip ahead to yeah? Just that's right. I just brought up transportation. So, Pardon? I just have a quick question about yeah. the formula yeah. grant for Yes, has that has the the amount per senior stayed fairly stable, or does it fluctuate? No, it, it fluctuates. 
Um, I believe when I started it was like five dollars per senior. Um, and what happens is every federal census year, it's when a new number is developed, it's based on your population. The last federal census in 2010 boosted Northampton senior population up. Mm -hmm. And um, the next census will be 2020. And because we have a number of new assisted living facilities, that's gonna boost up the um, number of seniors, even with the closing of Northampton nursing home and rehab center, which was 125. And that's the number per senior, does it rise? Yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah, tend to go down. Yeah, we all have to our legislation, legislators to um, increase it. So okay. I have to say Dave Stevens, who's the um, executive director of Massachusetts Council on Aging, keeps us all informed about what's happening in Boston and, you know, keeping everybody right on, on the mark to make sure that we, um, continue to ask for an increase with the, the formula grant, with also um, home care needs, um, all types of funding that come through the state that benefit the seniors. How, how does he come to the senior center to talk? Mm -hmm. Or how do you how do you communicate with David? Um, they um, do a lot of emailing. Okay. And, uh, okay. You know, they also do a newsletter, so that's what. And then when we attend um, workshops um, or a conference, we find out a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, so just to answer that question about kick the tires campaign, um, as of this morning, we have $55,056.80 for $55,056.80. Already on a fundraiser? Mm -hmm. That's all the fundraising we've done thus far. Um, and the C, the capital improvement, I see that you're asking for $65,000. So, mm -hmm. What's going to happen yeah. there? So the goal is to purchase two vans, the one through capital improvements and then one through this fundraising. And that'll bring us to a point where we will have almost a good transportation program so that we are you know, really out there bringing people to the senior center and um, getting them to the foot doctor in the senior center, getting them to do blood pressure, getting them to the fitness center, low vision group, anything that we're offering, it's to get them um, to have an opportunity at the senior center. And I know as a director, when you went through capital improvements, you did say to them that you were doing one for a fundraiser, mm -hmm. through a fundraising, and the other one you were saying through capital improvements, yes. correct? Yes. So they do know that you are looking at two. I believe I actually said that to have a full um, transportation program you need at least three vans and I wasn't trying to be what I'd say greedy it was to be realistic about if you want to have a good program you need more than one van and this is chairlifts too correct yeah exactly that's definitely what we would need um, so we have a very generous community um, to come up with that that's I excellent money since um, November of last year so we're happy now, so where do we so buy our vans um, well I'm going to be working with Dave Pomerantz, um, many of the vans, actually the last van that we um, purchased, not like we buy lots of vans, but um, it was purchased from Hudson, New York, New Hampshire, I'm sorry, Hudson, New Hampshire, and that's where a lot of councils on aging get them, but um, we'll be looking at the bid list, the state bid list, to see who's on there uh, to get the best price, and we're um, assuming, um, and hopefully rightly so, that if you purchase two, there's a better opportunity mm -hmm. for um, a discount. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so question is, when do you think all this will happen? Well, with capital improvements, that wouldn't be um, available Once we until July 1st. Right. And then um, this uh, it could be, you know, we need another, what, $10,000 um, potentially. So, um, you know, it could be piggyback that, okay, June, June, but then July, so you can put them together and still get what you need. And then I would think that September. within a month that we could, um, yeah. Perfect yep. timing. You know, September 1st could be like the grand, grand opening of the van. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely need it. There's no question yeah. about it. it. It's, it's um, detrimental not having it. So we look forward to that and, and would be much appreciative of um, capital improvements. So it lists here, uh, and I don't know that I really need to go through each one, but we do a lot of fundraising um, to bring in what we need to do for our portion of our budget. 
Um, so we talk need, about them fundraising. Talk about which ones we do? Okay. Um, so we do a shred day, usually twice a year. People bring all their stuff to get shredded, and um, there's a fee for that. It's a contribution. We do a holiday craft festival in Marketplace, which is a huge undertaking, and pretty much the whole senior center is transformed. And um, annual appeal is uh, put in with this, the um, city census. It's an envelope, and um, that's another one of our larger um, fundraisers. Can you, what is that? Uh, we have an envelope and it goes out in the census and it's just asking um, people to contribute to the um, opportunities and needs of the senior center. Okay. And so people can or they can't. The other organization that always tends to have an envelope in the census is um, support our schools. Um, so that's, that's in there. So we've been doing that for a long time. Uh, we also have the Memorial Brook Project. Um, we have brooks that can go into the um, meditation garden that was built by the Netto family in honor of their parents. And how much is it for each brook? The brook is $100, and it's engraved with whatever message you want on it. Um, it doesn't have to be about Mary and Frank Netto. It's um, whatever you want on it. So that's another way that we raise money, um, and that's to help support not only the senior center, but to really keep the meditation garden um, functioning. How, how are you doing on that? I think at this point we've done 10 bricks. You know, it's not anything we, we put something in our newspaper, but we don't actively That's a talk to people. Yeah. Oh yeah, we don't, we don't shy away from, you know, $5. <laughs> yeah, <I> know. <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, we have a tax sale, ongoing book sale, um, which is a, a remarkable thing for us. and I tell other senior centers they should do it because it's it's limited amount of work, but people are buying books and donating books all the time, and we can raise anywhere between six and $8,000 a year just mm -hmm. with those books. And those little paperbacks out in that whole big yeah, front room? The hardcover paperbacks. You need so. another room. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and are you yeah. always looking for donations? We are, but you know, right now we aren't taking any large quantities um, because we got inundated <laughs> with two people bringing in like 15 and 20 boxes of books, and it's no just way. way too much. Okay. Um, so, but we we do take books. Yeah, like a box. <laughs> a box right? yeah. uh, we started a mini sale table because after one of the tag sales that we had a couple years ago, we still had a lot of good stuff left. So we put it on that table, and that mini sale table makes thousands of dollars as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mary Lestowski pretty much ma manages that table. Um, we have bake sales, of course. Um, we have a just because sale at the end of the year. We have a lot of stuff <coughs> left in the gift shop and everything else, and we put it out. And um, there's a whole history to why we have a just because sale, which I'm not going to take up your yeah. time with that. Um, Kick the tires campaign I mentioned. Um, then we have some senior service cost centers, and this also supplements our budget. We have a gift shop, so the income from that. Um, the coffee shop. We have special dining services. If somebody uses the building and they want coffee or you know pastries or things like that, we can supplement that and we make um, money on that. Um, our newspaper, the Concert Chronicle, we have paid advertisements um, and donations that are made. We have building rentals. We have classes and programs, and fee, a percentage of the class fee is um, for the senior center. And um, then we get donations from Elder Vision Inc., which is our friends group. So there's there's a lot of fundraising going on. Can you? Uh, I would like to know about the building rentals. Yes. What is the price of the large room? Um, hmm. The board just changed the amount. I want to say, and I, I can get you the exact number because I'm not going to give it to you yeah. correctly. I believe it is $149 an hour, but there's an adjustment for the length of time somebody's going to use it. If they, want to, <coughs> if they want to use the kitchen, there's a flat fee of $75, and they also have to pay for um, someone um, to be in the kitchen to supervise it. And a lot of this I have gotten from the school department, um, how they do rentals, also from Smith Vocational, just kind of doing a lot of searching with what other senior centers or other organizations do. Um, and then if they want to use a number of our items, like the um, 
microphone, extension, well, I shouldn't use that, uh, the mm -hmm. microphones, the screen, there's additional costs for anything um, more. Is it just the large room that's, that's yeah. rental? Well, the, 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 the large room can be used, um, well, if, if it's available, it can be used during the day and in the evening. We have rented out other rooms, but not at the expense of a program. Um, so on weekends, somebody might want to use four rooms, and so then they can rent the four rooms, but they also pay for the four rooms. Um, so it's, it, it, it's it was always intended to be part of our budget when uh, the senior center was built. Uh, the next page is our senior services staff, um, some of which are full-time positions, which are 35 hours a week, uh, versus some of the part-time positions, which can be anywhere from 19 um, hours to uh, 10 hours a week. And most of these positions uh, are within our budget that we supplement, um, that the city appropriation doesn't cover all of these positions. You know, the grants and all the ways that we uh, make money um, to support our budget is how it's, um, how these positions are funded. So, excuse me, full time? Yeah. Yep, we full. have one, two, three, four, five, six full time. Yes. And that's at 35 hours. Yes. Correct? And yes. Per time? Is 10 to 19 hours? Yeah, I can tell you um, the handyman is 14 hours, medical transportation is 19, fitness center, both of those positions are 10 hours a week. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, and then we have our board. Um, as I mentioned, we are now called senior services, but we have a council on aging board, which consists of 15 members. And the most recent members who were appointed um, both speak Spanish, so we're very um, fortunate to have that now. Um, Councilor Labarge was um, very instrumental in getting one of the uh, members of Casa Latina to um, sign on to be on the board. And then uh, one of our former staff members, her mother, um, is now a member of the board and speaks Spanish. That's your mother, correct? No, it's Dominique's Dom mother. Dom Dominique? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember her? Dominique was our department secretary. Then she was promoted yeah. to the... Okay. Uh, yeah, and, and she helped make Irish soda bread. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Last okay. week. Okay. <laughs> uh, then our... What I've included in here is our Senior Services March calendar, um, which lists what we are doing just in the month of March, but I also um, added what we hand out to um, people who come into the building. So this we don't mail to anybody, it's in the building for people to take. Um, then the following page is fulfilling, oh, I just missed a um, typo. You said you leave these. Yeah, we leave Only these. in your building. Yeah, we leave these in our building, um, and then the newspaper is what everybody else gets. Because I was just curious, because we have so many people who come into City Hall. We have so many people who come in to this municipal building. You should leave a stack in Melissa's office, yeah. because people pay their taxes, mm -hmm. whatever, and at City Hall. Yeah, we, we have the newspaper that we leave in the places that you've talked about. We have about 50 drop-off locations that we leave our newspaper. That's excellent. And that yeah. includes a, a schedule of that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It lists all the, um, the programs. Yeah. So we started doing this because it was just easier for people to um, look at just the month and not open up the whole paper, whether it was the insert or the actual. Newspaper. So this has changed from month to month. Yes. Sometimes yeah. it changes week to week. We'll, we'll put, we'll publish it at the beginning of the month, and then two weeks in, we'll add a new program, so we'll, we'll print some more. Wow. So that's why it's, it's good to have that because we can edit it and change it and have it right available right in the building. No, I I looked in the Gazette, and it's amazing because they'll have the layout. Well, senior centers locally stamped the Amherst right down the line. And I look at them and I say, I gotta keep working harder <laughs> because 
this is unbelievable. Or they got that gazette and you see that. Yeah, it shows boom, 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 mm -hmm. Northampton. So I just um, took the March calendar. And so just in the month of March, we offer 421.25 hours of programming in a month which I, I believe is very outstanding. And I think I'll um, chime in with what you just said, Councilor Lavarge, that you know, there's a lot being offered and you know, there's a lot of effort and time putting into organizing and conducting um, programs. Um, you know, which what I really think is beautiful about some of this is when we get volunteers. <coughs> and like I had called Patty and told her about this elderly man, 80 something years old up in Chesterfield, Okay, who apparently is the computer voice. Yeah. Yes. The article is excellent. Did you, were you able to yeah, read that? Yeah, I read that, yeah. Excellent. He actually does services of teaching the people in Chesterfield no charge. And it's wonderful when we get people at the senior center who come in and do volunteer instead of saying, as an instructor, I'm going to charge this. Okay. I just think it's awesome that people do this. So we have a, a new one, a new bilingual computer volunteer. Yeah, I was waiting for to say that. So exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, how many meetings, Patty, you and I had with Casa Latina, Pat Keller, about bringing in, opening the doors at the senior center? That was extremely invaluable, and to me, of having a great diversity there. And when I heard that, just recently, I said to Patty, oh my God, you should be commended. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's awesome, because we did hear of many of them that cannot speak English, mm -hmm. who also did not know how to run computers. You know, that's what we're all about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're just working computers. together, so it's awesome. So part of our responsibility is uh, fulfilling unmet needs. Um, and so I've listed here um, all the types of needs that we have to pay attention to um, and each senior coming in can have different needs and the benefits counseling you know can you, they can be wanting one thing but you can find four other ways that you can assist them so you know I think there's always the concept that you know that there's always these fundraisers or events that are social and but it's it's a lot more than that it's not just um, having you know a corned beef and cabbage dinner or um, playing bingo there's a heck of a lot more and I think looking at the calendar you can see that but there's a lot of things that happen that go beyond um, just sort of leisure uh, programming um, so I just did an example here for example to meet the need of seniors nutritional and food security needs the following are offered by the senior services and it could be the SNAP program, formerly known as um, food stamps, farm share, brown bag, which is through Western Mass, uh, Food Bank of Western Mass. We have our own emergency food closet. We have cooking classes um, on nutrition and how to cook for one and healthy meals. We have farmer market coupons. We have a deals and steals outreach program. We have had the breakfast outreach program which the state stopped doing because they weren't funding it anymore it was nice to be able to offer a free breakfast and a diabetes cooking class um, so one of the questions um, uh, that councilor lavarge had asked me to cover was um, how do people know what we're doing so we do have our concert chronicle which is a 16 page um, issue that is mailed to every senior household in northampton florence and leeds and then on alternate um, months we have an insert put into the daily hampshire gazette so this is every other month and it lists what we're doing and obviously four pages versus 16 but it was a way to get current information out as often as possible and what does it cost coming out of the budget um, the, the whole paper let me, okay, is for 2014 the cost of printing, mailing, and inserting was, when I say inserting into the Dealing Hampshire Gazette, was $17,851.14. But that doesn't include a partial part of the salary of the media marketing. All of that is paid through our revolving account senior publications. 
and it comes from the ads that we place yeah. that are placed in the paper as well as a professional directory and our donor directory so that if people contribute they have their name printed um, one time a year and some years it's like oh, I don't know we might have to charge for the paper but so far we have not had to do that and I hope we never do well, that's um, great. but it's our contact with every senior household in Northampton Wings and Florence and do you find inserting in the Gazette, um, do you have people that come in that yeah, yeah, yeah they still a good it. way to get yeah. information out? That yeah. insert is well worth whatever we're spending on it because it goes to usually between 15 and 17,000 households. And um, it brings in people who we've never seen and not um, just because they're not going to participate in a program, but it's like, oh, uh, bring in books, or oh, look, they have this mini sale, they're looking for stuff, or oh, we have a pool table, do you want it? So it just, um, I think, brings in also the public knowing more about what we do, which I think is very vital, um, because we need com the community support. How, um, how do you know 15 to 17,000 households? Um, it, with the insert, that's how many um, issues and that go in the Gazette. Okay. So the Gazette gotcha. bills us according to how oh. many they go in. Um, and then our newspaper um, goes to every senior household. It's mailed to them. And um, there's, I'm going to say between 35, well, I'm not going to give you a number because I, no. off the top of my head, I don't know. But um, yeah, I think that's beneficial for people to get it to them. Um, it's also online, so we're just you know trying to get people to know know it's up there. I want to check it out. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, when we have the committees um, looking for a site mm -hmm. for the senior center, and we ended up with that one, which I wish that it had settled immediately that first year. Yeah. Anyway, that was a waste of time, waste of money. Um, but that's the past. My question is, I know we cannot go forward to add on. Can we go up and add on? Um, I'm sure that you could do that. I just recall Tony Patilla, who was on our building committee, and he was the building commissioner then. It was at that beginning point, he said, if you're going to be spending money on a second floor, you do it now, you don't wait because the roof is one of the most expensive parts exactly. of a building. So um, if you look at the roof of the senior center, it's pretty massive. It is. A lot of people walk in and say, oh, how do you get to the second floor? But we don't have a second floor. I would imagine that, yes, you could add on to a, you know, a, have a second floor. You would definitely need an elevator. Um, but I'm sure it's feasible with whoever figures out how you do it. So when you look at the building, because it is deceiving, there's not a flooring up there already, right? I mean, there's not. It's a measure. You, you can walk, you can stoop up there. I've gone up there and we have that crack in the cupola. Um, but, you know, you, you, there's, it's not, you can't do anything with it. So, but someday, just in case, because you never know, the population mm -hmm. will wake up and will go past that 28,000, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And I was curious because I know we can't go out. Oh, yeah, you're right that way yeah. not unless we take half the parking lot come back the only way we can go is up yeah, that's correct true. Yeah, that's true. and you're right about an elevator but i don't know i think that with funding and so forth like that with grants that should pretty well take care of ada for an elevator because it is under the cpa regulations for ada mm -hmm. yeah. but i was curious because yeah just looking at the building, there was a lot of opportunities there mm -hmm. of growth and moving on in different directions that we go forward. Yeah. There was, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. go ahead. I was going to say there was a senior center. I can't recall which community it was, um, and it's out in the eastern part that was building a senior center, and they actually have a second floor, but it's not um, finished off because they looked at the potential of what they might need in the future. See, there you go. Yeah. Since we're talking about the building, I mean, the big news, of course, is that Parks and Rec is moving forward, we're moving in there, too. So, um, so there's room right now that you have to, that is not being used, or? No, absolutely not. There's okay. daily, hourly program in the 
current space that's going to be occupied by the Parks and Rec. Uh, okay. Right. So, so how is that going to work? Well, we um, are brainstorming to figure out how we have to reconfigure our portion of the senior center. Um, one of the, and, and again, this is all draft thinking because nothing has really come down uh, firmly. I mean, other than we know that Parks and Rec is moving in. Mm -hmm. um, we just need to figure out what rooms are going to be used for what. So, you know, uh, there's different ideas. And I hate even saying anything specific because then I don't want, you know, like people calling and exactly. saying, oh, you're going to do that. And it's when, it, when we're ready with a plan, um, we'll um, let everybody know what we're doing. But the great room, most likely, it is going to have to be a programming space mm -hmm. ongoing. So there will probably be fewer rentals in that because we're going to need it. Um, there is a partition in there. Oh, you both there, yes. so you would know that. Um, that the <coughs> partition will be used so we can have two different programs um, okay. as needed. So, so, how many programs are we looking at in the room mm -hmm. that the rec department will be taking over? How many There's programs actually occur there? Between three and five a day happen in that three, room. Uh, three and five a day? Yeah, there's yeah. three hours of unoccupied time throughout a week that we were using that three hours to be able to schedule like special events. Like if Linda Manor was coming in to talk about dietary restrictions or you know things like that, we would put like guest speakers during that yeah. three hours of open space in that room. Or if a community meeting like Pam Shorts is and homelessness yeah, right. needed a space to meet, um, we would you know schedule her during one of those that three hour time when there was nobody in the room. So. And some of the ongoing programs in that room were the Met, the gay men support group, bingo, All the things. wisdom project. We were, we were start well. We still are starting a um, caregiver support group, which was going to be in there. So we'll, we'll figure out, you know, because different kinds of programs and groups need a certain type of space. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to figure that all out. Which, yeah, that's going to take some Yeah, it'll, it'll be a challenge and you know, we have to do it because the goal is not to eliminate any programs. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there might be, you know, everyone's going to have to be a little more flexible about, you know, the program. You're in the room, but you got to get out because it's yeah. done because the next group's coming you in. You might so. have to take a look at other rooms. Or are you going to make some changes? Yeah, yeah and that's, the, that's what we're doing. The that's day that the mayor came in, the board of directors um, were just having like an informal off the record conversation. They're like, oh, do you think we could move the fitness center into social day and switch the two rooms? Because social day is so much larger. One of our board members was like, no, because we have you know over 300 fitness center members. We could have more people coming in if the space was bigger. And take the back room, you mean where yeah. the rec department's going to go? Yeah, the, 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 yeah, this board member wanted to see if we could take the fitness center and put it in the social day room and then make the fitness center room the social day room mm -hmm. because he thought we could have more equipment and we could, because we have so many uh -huh. members, that room gets so crowded that we haven't yet had people like waiting for machines, but it gets to the point where people are timing each other. <laughs> yeah. Right, because so. the policy is you're on the machine for 20 minutes. Oh, that's it? Yeah. yeah. Each machine. Oh, you move machine. around. Yeah. You can move around. Um, so, so what happened? So what did he say? He said, Nick's that idea. <laughs> yeah, it does it. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. I could visualize that exercising room, putting in eight to nine employees, in an office space. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, because yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that recreation department, she runs. A good department and and uh, a remote show. There's no question about it, and I think it's a great move. I think that knowing the director, the assistant director, and the people that work there, everything is going to run. It'll all happen. I mean, it needs to, and it will. Yeah, yeah I agree. agree. Yeah. And eventually, someday you're going to say, Council of Arch, you know, she did bring that up. We need to go up. <laughs> <laughs> you want that second floor. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so I talked a lot about the programming that happens within the building, but uh, in terms of group programming. Uh, but we also have what I call non-visible services. And there's a lot of things that go on that nobody really sees because somebody's meeting in our office or we're going to somebody's home. Um, so I, I put in here um, some of those kinds of things. It's where we're working with a senior one-on-one. -on -one. And I'll just do, and I have a whole list here, but I'm gonna, rather than go through the list, I'm gonna tell you an experience today. We had a gentleman come in 
who was, um, I, I can't give a lot of specific yeah, details because okay. I don't want him to be identified, who is a senior who's homeless and he began to work with our social worker and then we actually got involved with it because of some, it was kind of escalating what he wanted and what we could do for him um, and finding kinds of services for him. Um, so we all were making phone calls to different um, organizations to see what could happen. He, we can't, we don't hand out money, so that wasn't mm -hmm. gonna work. Um, and because we work with the Salvation Army, we have vouchers that we can issue to people in need, um, I should say seniors in need, um, then, um, and that's one of the ways that we can help somebody. But it was a number of phone calls on all of our parts to just help this one senior um, to be able to found, find housing, at least temporarily, and then to <coughs> any additional benefits. Was he a veteran? So, do you work with Steve Connors and yes. Soldier Thumb? Yes. Yes, we worked with both of them today. They're awesome. Yeah. So, there's a lot of things that we do one-on-one -on -one with people, and I'll let you take the time um, on your own to read all of those. But, you know, there's, a, you know, just people who are doing a variety of things with us one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and a lot of it is completing forms for people, making um, phone calls to advocate for uh, seniors, um, we also are mandated reporters so that if there is uh, an issue uh, with either their safety to themselves or to others, um, we are mandated to uh, call. And then um, the special opportunities or offerings by the Northampton Senior Services. This is so something that's different than other um, senior centers may offer. We have a veteran specialist who is a volunteer and he had 30 years or so experience with the VA hospital system. So he knows everything about veterans' uh, benefits. And we just so come in the first Wednesday of every month from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. First Wednesday of every month? Yeah, and every Friday he's at um, the Holyoke Soldiers Home doing the same type of counseling. But I'm talking about the Senior Center. Yes. yes. Every once, once a month on a Wednesday. Yeah, first Wednesday of every month, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And is that by appointment? Yes. Yeah, although there's some people who drop in and if he's available, he can get them. Thank you. We also offer space um, with the Interfaith Health Fund, which not only helps seniors um, in need, uh, it's also um, other persons in Hampshire County. Um, so it's nice having them because it's another out for us to be able to offer to people. We have um, a gay men's support group, which I've already mentioned. Um, an LGBT support group, which will be getting again in the spring. And that comes with the grant that we had received. How has that been going? Uh, it was uh, once a month they were meeting, um, and, uh, and then it ended, and now it's starting again. And we got the grant too. That's for seniors? Yeah. Wow. Yes, yeah. and um, it again, as I mentioned before, it's with Amherst. Uh, East Hampton and Williams. That's Park. wonderful. Yep. Um, as we mentioned already, the benefits counseling program. Um, we currently have a volunteer with 30 years of experience in the field of benefits counseling, which um, Crystal had worked with her um, in a previous uh, job. Um, so Crystal was able to recruit her, and she's somebody who could spend two hours with a family member trying to find all of the avenues to get what that the mother needs um, in order to um, have health insurance or to make sure that her assets were going to be used um, functionally for what her needs were mm -hmm. or are. Um, we have a 911 emergency cell phone program and it's basically uh, doing cell phones and a program that is uh, in the event a senior has an emergency the phone can only be used for that. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of times teaching somebody how to use a cell phone. Do you take donations? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And what donation. happens is um, Dave Fenton from the Sheriff's Department comes and picks those out. He sends them out, they get refurbished, and then they come back. Okay. Um, we have the Senior Aid and Veteran, Senior and Veterans Property Tax Workoff Program that is run through our office. Um, and Steve handles the uh, veterans. So we at least, uh, you know, I let him know what kind of jobs are available. 
um, so we work together on that. Um, and then we, I mentioned the Salvation Army, um, are able to issue vouchers and provide other types of financial assistance. Could be that they need furniture, a senior needs furniture or clothing, that how we can work all that through the Salvation Army. And then the affiliations and collaborations. Um, I've listed a number of them that we work with. Uh, and I just gave an exam two examples, actually, um, how we're affiliated, for instance, and collaborate on things with the Pioneer Valley Transportation Authority. We have photo IDs at the senior center for people to get their bus passes um, so that they don't have to um, go down to Springfield. Um, and the next one is actually, it says APA, but it's ADA, um, applicant um, interviews. We have the senior center open for people to come in and someone from the PBTA comes down to um, interview them so to see if they can be qualified for um, the uh, ADA band. And then we do a lot of paratransit ridership meetings. We have one coming up and also hearings are held at the senior center. And then another example, Northampton Health Department, uh, the public health nurses on site at the senior center, which I'm quite thrilled about. It's something that um, I've been trying to work on and the public health nurses always been in another community as well and is really, uh, or was doing many things um, beyond just Northampton. So now we do have the public health nurse on site. Um, Is she on site every day or? No, a, a couple times a month. And it, it um, varies in what she does varies. Um, she might be doing a workshop, she might be doing blood pressure, right. she you know interacts, she doesn't just stay in the office because we have a wellness center. She goes out and talks to people and has actually um, done a number of one-on-one -on -one, um, health Council with individuals. She worked with the brown bag program just this past Thursday. But there's a lot of individuals that are low income that participate with the, the brown bag program. Mm -hmm. and this past Thursday, she was in the room and she introduced herself and talked. Um, she gave out handouts about when she's at the senior center. Oh, great. So um, a lot of people she made contact with. Uh, it was wonderful. I can't get that little Toshiba thing to disappear, so I apologize for that. Um, it's part of the computer. It's a Toshiba computer, and I clicked on every single one of those buttons to try to get it to go on, so I apologize for that. Okay. I eventually thought it was going to disappear, but it hasn't. But I know it's on a laptop, so I apologize. And so working with um, Meredith on trainings for our, our volunteers who do food services with us, and then flu clinics. And then the others are there for your perusal. Um, and then uh, we have a very active volunteer program. And as I say to all the volunteers and staff, what would we do without volunteers? Because they are the backbone of what we try to do. If we didn't have volunteers, we couldn't do what we try to uh, accomplish. Um, so there's um, some reception desk answering phones, providing information taking payments, coffee shop, gift shop, they do bookkeeping, special events, dining service, fundraising, and um, any type of clerical work that we need. Uh, and so Crystal has listed here that in 2014 we had 135 volunteers. How many? 135. And there were 12,988 volunteer hours logged in 2014. And those are, we always know there's more because yes, people don't, don't all log their hours yes. a lot of times. Uh, and then it just lists, it's not like somebody comes and says, oh, I don't want to volunteer, and that's, oh yeah, sure, okay. They, are, they, they have to complete an application, yes. the assistant director conducts an interview, and a reference check. Um, we do a quarry and all volunteers are made, mandated by um, state law to have to do a, a quarry. Are they doing fingerprinting now? I heard that's a new thing coming out. Yeah, they do in the schools, but we aren't required to do fingerprinting. It won't be long. So, um, and then, then there's a, the job placement and scheduling, volunteer orientation and training. Some volunteers have stayed with us 
they've been they were with us when we were over here I know and they come back and then some people they you know they sort of wane away and and you know there's a lot of time and effort put into um, having a volunteer and it's always beneficial when they stay but yeah they're well, it's time for them to move on they yeah, want, some okay. of them want to go yeah. with their families and we get a we've been recently getting a lot of um, volunteers from the Center for New Americans, people that want to learn to speak English. Um, they refer them down to the senior center so that they can volunteer in an administrative environment um, and, and, and use their English. So it's beneficial for us because we also get somebody who's bilingual. <laughs> oh, that's, I can, that's wonderful. Yeah. Really wonderful. And the very last page, I just put a few statistics together. Um, and this is defines what year or months it might be. Um, and just going through a few, in nine months, um, 1,350 bags of food from brown bag were distributed um, through our program. Um, medical equipment loan program, we have medical equipment that people can borrow, Northampton people can borrow, um, in the, 126 times thus far since um, July. Uh, in, 2014, we had um, uh, we had. Uh, well, I got to back up. Fitness Center right now has 283 paid active members. Paid is the key there. <coughs> and then in 2014, the the number of times people used that fitness center was 8,861 times. And um, medical transportation, 411 rides since July. This is where um, volunteers use their, their own vehicles. So once we get the vans, they won't have to use their own vehicles. No, we're still going to have the transportation, medical transportation through this program because what's important about the medical transportation is that driver stays with the senior while they're at their doctor's appointment or at the hospital. With the van. And that's very, very important that with the somebody. Van. Is with them. Um, the volunteers doing medical transportation with their, with their vehicle. vehicles. So they could be going down to Bay State Medical, and that volunteer gives them the ride, stays there the entire time. It could be an hour, it could be four hours, and then brings the senior back home. So it's pretty much a reassurance program as well. What about the legality part of it? We are covered through the city insurance. Mm -hmm. um, they have to have a safe driving record, all that's checked. The quarry check, um, background check in terms of references. Yep. Oh. Itsy bitsy. Yeah. Just yes. quickly, Patty. Yes. I would like to know. We got five minutes because we need to get out of this room. Um, because we're going through our budget hearings. Mm -hmm. What does your department look like? I think that's very important for us to counselors to know what's happening or. Mm -hmm. Are you tight this year? What, what, what's going on? Um, the budget was, you know, we were told to do level services, and our budget only increased a little over $5,000 based on um, pay increases due to contracts. So that's the only thing that went up in our budget. Um, so with what the city appropriation is, there's, I think, $101,000 that we need to help with. I, I believe it's 101,000, a little more than that, this year. So between the grants and everything I've listed here, yeah, um, that's what we need to come up with. And last year we had to come up with what, 97 thousand? I think it's 96 that we had. I put it in here. And that was through that. grants and so forth like that. For every everything that I listed for um, funding sources. Yes. Yeah. How we look at what we need to pro provide as our portion. Did you write the you did, didn't hear. Uh, yeah, 96000 It's on that senior service on the source page. Yeah. Okay, so $96,000 up 33 cents yeah. is what we needed to come up with. Yeah. So, so which is the fundraising and stuff. Yeah, on anything there, the coffee shop, gift shop, book sale, all of that. Lots of them wasn't less than that. Techie. Look at that on your resume. We've been hanging out. Yes, I actually yes. <laughs> 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 um, 
as you know, we're working on a new ordinance, and there's a lot of concern. Um, yeah, good job. Good job. In particular, who aren't able to get their shoveling done on time, and, and there's been kind of talk about that there are services available or possibilities for people to help with that, but I'm not sure if they truly know if there are. Uh, we solicit um, people who are interested in shoveling or plowing either as volunteers or um, for a fee. And then the senior, we, we provide, because we can't recommend anyone, we can provide a list okay. and that's, that's what we can go through um, to provide information. How many do we have on the list? How many are on the There's list? There's eight on the list now. One recently took themselves off because they were so busy and um, they couldn't take on any more people. Mm -hmm. But what I do is I put an ad in the paper um, under volunteer opportunity. And um, when people call me, I ask them for three personal or professional references. And then I tell them that I'm going to check their their references and then I'll put their name on a list and when somebody asks for names we give them the whole list it says right on the list that these people have not been quarry checked by the city of Northampton nor are we recommending any of these people we're just providing this resource to them similar to like the Angie's list directory um, yeah. or an online like referrals list um, the city of Boston just recently called and I spent about 45 minutes on the phone with them because they um, heard about our program and they wanted to implement something oh, yeah. like that in Boston because they have a lot of people who have to shovel sidewalks and yeah. because of and all they the have stuff. Them. They have yeah. Yeah. What yeah. about, because I think I had emailed one in the mayor in regards to, because I did get calls about that, always our elderly, you know we've mm -hmm. been through this Patty, mm -hmm. and we have the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. To me that's a uh, good program to do a community service mm -hmm. and I don't know what the legality is involved with that but maybe you could call you know Sheriff Garvey and District Attorney Dave Sullivan and see what we can do here to get them the Sheriff's Department mm -hmm. of having these men up there young men mm -hmm. go out and shovel some of the elderly people's sidewalks Different people, they have different opinions on yeah. it. But that's yeah. what I'm saying about legality part of it. Yeah. I was talking to an attorney over the weekend, and he said those things can be done. Yeah, but it depends on the department. Yeah, supervision. They have to exactly. Yeah, they so. can get them out. And um, another counselor had called me today, and I think that there may be a group convening to talk about this because I have some ideas of um, funding and. You know, in the past we've had the football team, though they were doing it because they were raising money. Yes. Yeah, but, you know, uh, kids aren't out there anymore knocking on your door, can They're I not. shovel for you? So it's like, how do we how do we get the community to get involved the with Boy Scouts? helping out? The troops and so forth like that. Yeah, so I think it's like everybody kind of brainstorming together to figure out what, what, what could work, what could be. Because this has been going on with the seniors for a long time, trying to find people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, one year we put out a questionnaire, um, and I believe that was in the census form as well, and it was paid or unpaid, and it listed a number of like house cleaning, mm -hmm. gardening, a mm -hmm. number of things, and um, snow removal was one of them. So you do get some people that are that will volunteer mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah, we have uh, two kids that were National Honor Society students. Um, they could, they could, the thing was is that they could only do days that there was no school, which this year there were a lot of days that were no school, so, but they said that any day that there was a school cancellation or delay that they would be willing to go to somebody's house. They both lived in Florence and they both were seniors, so they drive. Yeah. Um, so oh, that's excellent. School. Yeah. And they There's did it as well. Need it's how do we get them? Right, yeah. One year we had um, somebody from it was a woman from Holyoke who took the bus to Northampton with her shovel to do sidewalks for the people. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 She was on the list. She was paid, excuse me. And um, but that I thought, wow, that's dedication to wanna I guess so. to do it and or because you really need some income. So when we yeah. used to have the Nagels group. Oh yeah, the, the honor board used to do right. that. Yeah. Yeah. 
we don't have that. I think it would be nice, as you suggested, to be able to either get like a set group, like the, you know, the sheriff's department or through the school, somebody that right. can kind of sign. carry over each year. People, right. yeah, soldiers sign. I know that while like my daughter volunteers at the senior center and she volunteers for the school and she said that you know it makes she's like it makes me feel so good to help people but she's like people don't really experience it until they do it um, helping somebody not because you're helping them like to get paid just to help them, you know? uh -huh. thank you well thanks for the opportunity so wonderful presentation talking about who we are. Move to adjourn. Look at it. Paper, we're out of here.